Hey, good evening, everybody. Praise the Lord. Man. Woo. Well, I'm going to be ready, ready to get to heaven. Get away from all these chemtrails. Get away from this frequency, man. Praise the Lord. But hey, God knew the end from the beginning. He knew all this would be here. And so we just, uh, we endure every day. We trust him with each step that we take. Say, Lord, please help me with that next one. Next step, next breath. Amen. Praise God. Today's the 19th. Today's the 19th of July. And this is the 40th day of our counting the, om the Omer to the wheat harvest. Amen. 40. The 40th day is when Jesus ascended to heaven. The Ascension Day. That's what we refer to it as. And the Catholic Church really does it. But they do it on the wrong date. They do it on the wrong calendar at the wrong time. They do it in opposition to the word. Opposition to Jesus. Opposition to God. Hey guys, don't live your life in opposition to God. That's why we encourage you to read the Bible around here so you'll know the Bible so you can stay in line with it in a loving manner just to show the Lord, hey Lord, how can I how can I love you today? I want to be obedient. I want to walk with you. Amen? And he'll have that happen. Hey Clay, God bless you, dude. Amen. Hello, beloved friends and true family. You got that right. Hello, everybody. Uh, I love you dearly and uh, praying for you. We're praying for you all along the way. Today, like we said is uh, the first day of Sean's 48th year. You know, the Bible says, and in his 48th year, that means one day after your 47th birthday, that's your 48th year. And in the 48th year of so-and-so's reign, and whatever. And so I was laughing with him about that. Hey, dude, you're in your 48th year now. Just had his 47th birthday, right? Hey, God is awesome. He's large and in charge. And uh, we're going to go see our uh, dear brothers and sisters in Nebraska, McCook, Nebraska. And uh, so we're here in Kansas right now, ready to get into Nebraska tomorrow and go see them. Praise the Lord. They have uh, been my dear friends. Rick has been my dear friend since pre-teens. He, he and his family came to church where my dad preached when we were growing up. And uh, they moved away to from Omaha to McCook, Nebraska. And then I didn't catch up with them personally, until our adulthood, after he had married Lisa and the kids were here. And so they've been with us five years following in this Bible study. And so we're going to go there, encourage them. Uh, they asked me to come check out and try to, you know, see if, see if we could probably be the pastor at their church and everything five years ago. And I knew better going into it than I ever would. But I was invited to go and I wanted to see my friends and I said, sure. And I got there and they raked me over the coals, man, about my uh, wife leaving me and taking my kid and divorcing me. And you know we're not going to divorce anybody. This is after they grilled me and questioned me and, and just put me through it, man. And I wasn't in my John the Baptist mode. You know, you brood of vipers. Let's, you know, the wrath of God come down and kill you. I was in the humble pastorate mode and they refused God's guy. They refused God's guy, not knowing God's word. And it was a bad deal. It was a bad deal. A demon-possessed dude who wasn't even a member of the church who hated me because of the Bible studies before I ever got there made it bad on me, man. And he come in with his mouth, man, and was grilling me and King James Version. And, you know, it was just bad news. That was five years ago. and uh, But they have stayed with the Bible study right here like you guys have. And we're going to go see them. Uh, I really felt the Lord urging us to do this. Because they're the only ones from my childhood who are still following God and his Bible codes. Everybody else is gone, dude. Everybody else is blown the scene. See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. And they're still here. And the Lord just really put it on our hearts to go see them right here before the rapture. Amen. Get together fellowship. They have nobody. They have zero Nobody. Their church is stupid as a stick. I found that out when I was there. Got no, no idea what's going on with the things of God and pure patriots, and, you know, my country, tis of thee, and all that jazz. And so we just want to encourage. Clay said, We read the book of James last night, 10 to 20. Thanks for the push. Love that book, James the Convictor. Can you clarify the works that he speaks of? Yeah, that's after you're saved.
It's a process called sanctification. What nobody ever gets in this world is salvation is in three phases, and it all happens in the first phase. If you get the first phase correct, the other two are automatics. The three phases of salvation are justification. That is where I am made absolutely not guilty, innocent in the eyes of God, as though I had never sinned one day in my life. I had never sinned one sin in my life. Now, who in their right mind wouldn't want to be justified before God? Found innocent. Guiltless of all charges. Amen. Anybody? Man, that's what I want. And that's what belief does. The only way to be justified in the eyes of God, as though you had never sinned a day in your life, uh, the only way to be made righteous, in other words, is by believing that Jesus became our sin so we could become his righteousness. And when you believe that in his death, burial, and resurrection, and that his sin, uh, th that his blood paid for all of our sin in full, paid the price in full for all sin, for all mankind, for all time, past, present, and future. Now, when you believe that in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his shed blood, paying the atonement, paying the propitiation, paying the price, then you're saved. And in God's eyes, you are justified. As soon as you believe, he infuses you with his own personal perfection, his own righteousness. And at that moment, you are justified just as if I had never sinned a day in my life in the eyes of God. Along with that comes sanctification. When God justifies you, he sets you apart. That's what that means. Holy, sanctification, those are the same words. And he makes you holy. He makes you different than the others. He sets you aside for his reasonable service. Like George was mentioning last night, okay? God's going to bless all of you who have shared these Bible codes. Because that's a very small group, and that's some incredible faith. I, no, man, I, be I believe those Bible codes are the Word of God. I'm sharing them. Oh, dude, do you know how few people are doing that? I've got more digits than what's going on there. I encourage you to be a people who are going on with that. So, James is talking about the second phase of salvation. So now that I am justified, why don't you walk like you are? Why don't you walk out your justification? Not to be justified, but because you're, you're justified, you're going to live sanctified. You're going to live holy. You're going to live separate unto God and not under this world. You're going to be absolutely different because your, your love, your, your level of love is up here and you want to love Jesus back. So you get busy with his word. And so those works James are talking about has nothing to do with salvation. Why? How, how do we know this? The very first words in the entire book, my brethren. James, the servant of God, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren. He's talking to Christians, dum-dums. My brethren, count it all worthy when you fall into different kinds of temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be entire and full-blown you be complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Don't be double-minded. A double-minded man shall not receive anything of the Lord. He's unstable in all his ways. Let the brother in low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, and the rich in that he is made low. For as the flower of the grass, we're all going to fade away. Our lives are nothing. And then you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. James is talking to Christians. My brethren. My brethren. My brethren. My brethren. And if you can understand the three phases of salvation, justification, sanctification, and at the end is rapture, glorification when we get our new bodies. The first is your spirit being made alive. Our spirits are dead in trespasses and sins. They're dead. We need someone to come along and resurrect them, save us. And God's righteousness in us, the Holy Spirit in us, connects us back to God, to the Father, as an umbilical cord. We are in heavenly places, seated in heavenly places, thinking heavenly things, walking out the holiness of God through the Word of God at that very moment. Sanctified. We have a connection, our spirit. That's the first phase. Justification is your spirit be 
becoming alive and quickened and connected to the Father again, like Adam had before he died. In the spirit world, remember, the day you eat of that fruit, you shall surely die. Tyvon says, James 2 is about profitability of one's faith, living by faith. Yeah, sanctification. It's the second phase of salvation. It ain't the first phase of salvation. It's not what gets you saved. It's what you do because you're saved. And living by faith, knowing there's going to be a judgment seat of Christ, where he gives out rewards to his saved. He's not going to give any rewards to the lost. Only to the saved. Only to those who are justified will he give rewards of sanctification, being sanctified. And that's something you do on your own. See, God justifies you when he saves you. That means he counts you not guilty, innocent of all charges, man. All the guilt's on Jesus, not on you. So it's as though you never sinned. Jesus was punished for it all. Justification. Sanctification is where God makes you holy unto himself. You're saved. You're set apart. But then there's a process in what James is talking about, personal holiness, personal sanctification. And this is where the Methodists, and I'm not talking about the modern-day United Methodists. I'm talking about the Wesley boys. This is where they got it wrong. They preached it right for the second phase of salvation if they would have preached it for the second phase of salvation, sanctification, but they didn't. They preached it for the first phase. Personal holy, you got to walk holy, be holy, do the right things, do the Bible, da 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 to maintain your salvation, to be saved. Wrong, dude. You go to hell thinking you can do anything to be saved. And there's a bunch of people, even of the old Wesleyan ways, the Methodists working out the, their methods and they're doing sanctification and holiness and righteousness and they're doing what we preach here. But we're preaching it here for you to re, uh, receive rewards of the Lord and to love him, to show him that you love him by keeping the word, by regarding the word. The Wesleyans, the Wesley boys and the personal holiness guys teach you got to be personal holy to be saved. So I can sit there and see a, a Methodist preacher of the old school, not these United Methodist faggots, okay? Not those guys, not, not those six-colored rainbow-wearing retards, not them, but the ones who believe in sanctification. And I'll watch him, and I can see a lost dude preaching there. I can tell. I can discern it. Preaching up a storm, clapping his hands, preaching against wickedness, preaching against, oh man, partying and drugging and smoking and drinking, and, and it's all in the flesh. And that guy I'm looking at right there is going straight to hell, preaching a fireball message. And it takes the discernment of the Holy Spirit to know it. Why? Because we're listening for every time in that message they preach something they can do or they can act upon or, or work they can perform to that classifies them as saved. And I mean, they're lost. They're going straight to hell. And we got a guy preaching the things of God, preaching holiness in the flesh, in unholiness. And that's what so many of them do. All the holiness preachers, the Pentecostal preachers, they preach up a storm against sin and they'll name sins. And boy, you women quit putting on that makeup and you men quit putting on short sleeve shirts and they'll make up all these rules as they go. And they and you think they saved until they, you, they look you in the face and say, you must, must believe in the Godhead and there is no Trinity. There are no three beings in the Trinity. It's one being who has three purposes. And when he's, when he's rated to be God the Father, he'll be that. And when he's rated to be God the Son, he'll be that. And when he's rated to be the Holy Spirit, he'll be that. But he's not all three at once. Lies, 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 wickedness, wickedness, wickedness. That is heresy. The Godhead is three persons and they are all active in your life right now. All three in one, one in three. You better believe that. But these people, that's why people are always sharing, oh, you got to hear this sermon. And they're going to share some N-A-R idiot with me. And it doesn't take five seconds to know that this idiot is N-A-R. Why didn't the gal that sh shared that video clip with me know? Because you guys have the discernment of a pig if you're not reading your Bible. And those of you that have taken on the challenge and said, you know what? I'm going to read my Bible 10 to 20 chapters. I'm going to know the heart, the mind of God. I'm going to know his ways. His ways are past finding out, but I'm going to know more of him today than I did yesterday. You are the ones he has given discernment to, and you can tell these things. Okay?
And we want you, we want, I want everybody listening to my voice right now to know how to discern a devil when it's standing in front of you. Try the spirits, test the spirits, whether they be of God. Okay. The devils are always going to kick the righteous women and men out of their midst. They'll get rid of you, call you the heretic, call you the fool, call you the one who has too many demands of holiness. And all you're doing is bringing to them the word of God and you're teaching the second phase of salvation. And they mix it up with that first phase. And then those who will believe it's the second phase still don't like the list. They don't like God's list of the phases of sin, what is sin and what is not. Hey, let me cut to the chase. Here's how you know what sinfulness is. Is what you're acting in temporary? Or is it absolutely 100% for eternity's sake? Because you live by faith, you walk by faith, and you know at the cross line of death is the start line of eternity. And you're doing everything on this side of death for eternity. You're passing it forward. That's the real passing it forward. You live by faith. Now, we all, we're also told to lay aside every sin and weight that easily besets you. Not everything in the temporary is sin. I mean, you've got to pay your taxes. You've got to go to work. You've got to do some things. But you don't have to do them according to the temporary, according to the flesh, according to now. Everything you do, we do heartily to the Lord. Whatsoever your hand finds to do, you do it with all your might to God, to His glory. You're working for Him in His presence. I pray you've come to the place to every move you make, every breath you take, every every, every thing you perform, every moment of that thing, you're in the presence of God. You're talking with Him. You're meditating on Him. You're singing about Him. Not, not just about Him. You're singing to Him. You are acknowledging His presence in your life. I hope you're doing that. I hope that's who you are. I hope that's what you're about because that's what we're supposed to be about. That's Christianity 101, Discipleship 101. And everything that's not for eternity, it's wasted. Wood, hay, stubble, burn up, whether it's sin or just a weight. It's slowing you down in what you should be doing. And we encourage you in this Bible study. Guys, we don't have many days, maybe 10. Today's day 40, and day 50 is the Jubilee. It's the cutting of the wheat, putting the sickle to the wheat, the harvest, the wheat harvest, the first Jubilee of Pentecost. And we encourage you to look up, man, because Jesus says, you know when it is. It's obvious when it is. And then he starts talking about July, July, my wisdom of July. And we know that's Sean. He was born in July. We know that. And we have another Bible code yesterday talking about July and the birthday boy and understanding that God's closure came on the day of the birthday boy. God's understanding uh, come to its finality in this phase on the day of the birthday boy. That was yesterday. Okay, so we know we're there and we're encouraging you to live your life there. Be holy, sit there. I had somebody ask me uh, questions about um, getting people saved. And part of what I've said is that, guys, getting people saved, when you're talking to somebody about their salvation, let them talk so you'll know what's going on. And then you be ready with questions because he who asks questions is in charge. Now, you're not wanting to be bossy and you're not, you're not wanting to be manipulative, but you're wanting to get this person saved because that's your number one, that's the cry of your heart is to get them saved. So what are, what are our questions? What do we say? How do we relate to these people? You always get them back up. You always get them back in the mindset of, are you going to heaven because you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection? Or are you a Baptist? Are you going to heaven because you asked Jesus in your heart? Now, which is it? Because asking Jesus in your heart will not get you to heaven if you aren't placing your faith in his death, burial, and resurrection. Hey, why are you saved? Well, because I asked Jesus in my heart. Okay, let's ask another question. What is your faith in? Why, when God says, hey, what makes you think you can come to my heaven for eternity? What, what are you going to say? Oh, I asked Jesus into my heart. And he'll look at you and say, which Jesus? And why did he need to come into your heart? Where's that in the Bible? You need to learn to ask those questions here because you're going to get your, your whole emphasis is to get them saved. You want to see them saved. You want them to know what salvation is. You want them believing. 
You want them placing their trust. They dive into the fact that the only way I'm going to heaven is because of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection. And I'm placing my life, my existence, my eternality into that truth, I believe. And that's what you want them to do. You want them to believe and get it. You want it to get a hold of them. You want to set the hook of truth and get it back. So you, you ask them questions. You get back to them always coming back to what do you believe? I know your preacher preaches this, and I know you said this, but what do you believe? Can you tell me quickly what you believe, how a person go, goes to heaven? If, if I were lost, and you knew that I was lost, and I come up to you and blew your mind with this question, hey, dude, can you tell me how to get to heaven? What would you tell me? And their answer tells you whether they're saved or not. Because they're telling you what they believe. Don't tell them what to believe. You find out from them what they do believe, and you'll know whether they're saved or not. Okay? Now, if somebody tells you, hey, uh, I'm saved because I believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, man, and there's no other way I'm going to heaven other than that, you can say amen, but you still aren't sure whether he believes that or not. He may know how to parrot that. He may know how to say that to make you happy because people pleasers want to make everybody happy with the right answer. They'll answer you one thing and the next guy another thing and the next person another thing. So just because they answer the right question doesn't mean they believe what they said they believe. Okay? That's why we're not to judge no man. We don't, and, and that means don't judge them as saved. Don't judge them as saved. Now, we go on with what people say. And then I'm sitting next to you, man. Uh, I was asked a question when I was interviewing to be a cop back when I was an 18-year-old kid, 19-year-old kid. And he said, what are you going to do when you're called to a, a scene, a break, a break in an entry? It's a candy store. And you walk over and your fellow officer reaches over in a bowl and starts grabbing some candy and starts eating it at 2 o'clock in the morning with nobody there. What are you going to say? Well, the answer is, does his mom and dad own the store? Does his aunt and uncle own the store? Uh, what's going? You need to find out the story before you come up with an idea and judging the guy why he's eating candy. He may have purchased that candy already in his family. Okay, so when you see something, when you see somebody doing a bad deed, don't judge them. And when you see him doing a good deed, don't judge him. Don't misjudge somebody inappropriately. You judge him according to scriptures. What does the scripture say? And that's why we want you reading 10 to 20 chapters every day. That's why we want you knowing these Bible codes. Because the Bible code tells you, if you know the Bible code, you will be right with God here at the end of days. The Bible code says that. But that's why we are so adamant and we're on fire with you getting to know these Bible codes because my heart is that your heart will be absolutely 100 in line with Jesus. And you'll love him. With all your heart, soul, mind, and... Adrian says, hi, my family. And Lila says, hey, family. Hey, hey, ladies. Love you very much. God bless you. Glad to have you with us tonight. Why don't we look at a code here? So the three phases of salvation class, what are they? Justification, sanctification, and glorification, and all three of them happen at once with justification. When you believe, and the Lord knows whether you believe or not, he's the searcher of the heart. And he knows whether you believe in his finished work and you've placed your entire faith in that. That's the only way I'm going to have it. See, you can't see him from a distance. Most of the bums out on the street, the drug addicts and the alcoholics, are saved. And most of the people in the church are not you can't tell by looking at him. Those boys that dress up like Trump and talk about God ain't saved. He's talking about Apollo. He's talking about Satan being his God, mammon. And we'll see here shortly who's who. What a wonderful situation we find ourselves in with this whole assassination deal, dude. It's more than an assassination attempt. It's going to be an assassination with a follow-through. Because the devil intends for this guy to die. Because Satan is a double crosser. You and I, were the single crossers. We look to Jesus, the cross of Calvary. And the devil wants to double cross you in that, bringing God into the mix. Holiness. And there's only one holiness. That's the holiness of God. And when you have the righteousness of God at salvation, your spirit is made alive. Then your soul is activated and becomes alive and more like the soul is you. That, that person that you are that makes you different than me, that's your soul. 
And your soul, my soul, needs to be conformed to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. The only way to do that is look, like James says, into the mirror. You got to look into the mirror of the word and let the word reflect itself and you reflect it. You do what it says. The word ain't changing. Okay? So we let the word of God be our mirror. And we adjust our looks, our life, our actions, our activities according to the mirror of the word. Okay? So getting saved takes care of your spirit immediately. You're attached to God. Then it begins the process of taking care of your soul. Now, people can be saved and still act like the devil. People can be saved in sin. People can still be saved and act in opposition to Scripture because they don't read it. They're ignorant of it. Okay? So you can, you can be sanctified by God, set apart with it him without having and living out personal holiness and still go to heaven. It's best if you'd live out personal holiness, guys, I'm telling you, for your eternity sake, your reward's sake, your assignment's sake, your loving Jesus. There's great rewards in diligently seeking him. And you must understand that God is a, he's a lover of giving reward. And you must come to the conclusion that you need to be a lover of receiving the reward. And the only way you're going to receive the reward, because God's a giver, a gift giver, gift, 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 grace, 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 only a gift. Same way after you're saved. All his gifts are without repentance. He just loves to give, 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 because he's a giver. Among being holy, among being a lover, among being merciful and gracious and wrathful and anger and holy bitterness. Okay? So he has all that. And then finally, all of our, everybody who has one will have number three, the glorification, but not everybody will have part number two, self-sanctification, self-holiness to, to match up where God has brought us in sanctification. He has pulled us out of Satan's world, turned us into a new creation, set us on the island by himself. He set us with him and you could live like the devil on that island. And so this is a gift that you get to, get to give God. Salvation number two is the gift that you offer him, your life, your mind, your heart, your words, your thoughts, your emotions, your everything, and let him work his gifts, his fruit of the spirit through you. Amen. I hope that's clear. God wants me to have a sweet spirit with my Mormon family. Amen. Amen. He, 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 if he wants that, you have that. Amen. And that's what I would do too. You know, when I come on here and I call people fools and retards and idiots, and when I get out there with, with the crowd witnessing to them one-on-one, -on -one, we don't do that unless there's time. Some, then I'll tell them, especially if they're an uh, adamant fool or a retard or whatever, when, and they'll just keep being a fool. Then I tell them, you're a freaking retard, dude, and you're going to know that shortly. Okay, but we don't start out blasting them in that. We have a sweet spirit, the spirit of God, love, joy, and peace. That's what we bring to the mix, and that's how you'll win them. We are soul winners, not soul repellers. Don't get out there and preach and hold the Bible and tell people. You, you got to, so, he that winneth souls is wise. He that repelleth souls is a fool. You're a retard. Okay, so we don't want to repel souls. We want to draw souls through truth. Guys, the true truth of Jesus Christ. Truth and love will draw them in. Now, if they continue to fight it and rebel and be all that guy, a man that's a heretic, after the first and second admonition, you, you try to you try to admonish them twice. After the first one, you can get rid of them, but especially after the second one. The second time you bring the grace of God to them and they reject it, get rid of them. Get rid of them and let them know you get rid of them. And you come back to me when you're ready to believe in Jesus Christ because God sent me the, the witness of him to you. You are blessed with my presence. You're blessed with the truth that I bring because the truth I bring is the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God. And you're rejecting. You're not rejecting me. You're rejecting him. And you need to know that. And until you're ready to receive him, I'm rejecting you, man. And this is, we're talking to the people who claim to be Christians. We, Paul told us to church those folks. Okay, and uh, we still have mercy on them. Still, have, we love them. We want them back, but we re release them over to the devil so he can beat the crap out of their bodies. So they're beat down all the way to a humble place, and they're like looking up to the Lord now. Okay, Lord, I I'm ready for you. Praise God. We can bring them on back to the fellowship. That's the purpose, and that's what that's what Paul did. And I encourage you to be that. I encourage you to be soul winners, man. God is always strengthening my responsibility task. Amen. I thought of a. Uh, backyard full of red cardinals this morning. Amen. Always oh, strengthening my responsibility test. Amen. He does that. Amen. He does that. 
He loves us. He takes care of us. Why don't we look at yesterday's code, guys? Yesterday's code was awesome. Yesterday's code was among the last of them. There will probably be one more. I'm, I'm not speaking in Sean's place. I'm just guessing there's going to be one more that's going to be uploaded to the book. Okay? Uh, where's that one from yesterday? Right there. This was good stuff. Let's look at it. Well, I got a bunch of people messaging me. Let's get set up here. All right. Here's what we're just going to look at the translation. The translation, Cush, I love you, dude. You know, Cush is in that list that George shared last night. And, and guys, I encourage you to read that, um, uh, what he put in there, his editorial, okay, and his commentary. And read that. And Cush, Heather, big parts in this whole thing. If you do a little bit in this Bible code ministry, you imagine what, how many of you there are that even do a little bit. And you're going to understand the small numbers here and how large this thing is in eternity. Your little bit is magnanimous. And don't ever let the devil come and tell you that your little bit is just too little. Your little bit is a lot of bit. And little is much if God is in it. And you're doing the work of God. You do the work of God. Just share. Just share these Bible codes, man. Just share these sermons that we're preaching. Okay? And most importantly, listen to it again and you share it with yourself. You get it in your heart. You get it in your mind. You get it in your spirit. And you test yourself. I am saved. Okay, I believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. We're not going to let the devil take that from me. Once saved, always saved. Now, am I loving you, Lord? Am I doing what you want me to do? Have I, have I drop kicked everything? Have I flushed everything that doesn't belong? I got family members who love Auburn University. And I hate Auburn University. I hate everything about them. I hate, I, I begin with their education system and then straight to their sports. Fly War Eagle. I hate Alabama. Alabama, guys, is a pincushion, a voodoo doll for Obama. Every time people say, Bama, 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 Bama's going to do this, Bama's going to do this. They're talking about Barack Obama. He is the Crimson Tide. When he starts cutting heads off, there's going to be quite the Crimson Tide until Jesus turns he and his army into the Crimson Tide. That 200-mile river of water, the river of blood, adrenal chrome blood, okay? That whole roll tide and Crimson Tide is a thing of the devil. I hate that, and my family don't get that. They think I'm coming against them. Oh, I love Alabama. I love the War Eagles. God hates them. I'm going to hate them right along with him. And we're going to tell you to flush all that stuff. We're going to tell you to flush your favorite team. If you at this very moment do not absolutely abhor, hate, can't stand your once favorite team that you rooted for and cheered for and acted like a retard over, you don't get it. And we're encouraging you to get it. We're encouraging you to get rid of your idols, get rid of your foolishness, to get rid of your strange clothing, your strange apparel that God hates. All your uniforms, your hockey jerseys, your football jerseys, you, all the pictures I had in football jerseys. What a fool, what a retard. Years and years and years of it till God woke me up 12 years ago. 13. Praise God, he wakes us up. Hallelujah. And that's what the joy is. The joy is he wakes us up. It's not the fact of, oh, I was so stupid, I was so foolish, I was such a... It's praise God that God kept working on me and made me realize that I was all that. And he saved me out of it. He sanctified me, man. Glory to God. And we shout. Evelyn says, I share the gospel in my workplace, five people a day. I share the harpazo. Get sick. Kush says, amen, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Help me to do better in all things for you. Glory to God. What a great prayer for all of us. He's praying for all of us, guys. Starts with himself. All, all prayer begins with yourself. It's not them and those and look at her and look at... No, no, no. It's me. Lord, you you work on this jackass. You work on this fool. You work on this retard. And then I'm going to pray that you work on the other retards as well. Okay? It starts with me. It starts with the mirror. Lord, take care of me. I want to do what I'm supposed to do because I'm going to give an account of myself to you when I stand before you. And I want to love you now. I'd lo love for you to be pleased today in my love for you and show me what that means. I, I don't know how to, your love, God, and your love is past finding out, but boy, I sure would like to love you according to your joy. And uh, I sure would like my, my love to match your love to you. I, you first, Lord. I want to love you before I love anybody else. I can't love anybody else without you. You are love. Please help me to love you. 
And please correct me. Show me what that means. If I disappoint you in any way, if I'm sinful, if I'm hard-headed, if I'm stubborn, oh, please, Lord, burn this out of me and humble me so. Humble me so. Keep me so humble below hell, below the cross, Lord. He'll do all those things. That's what he desires. That's what he loves. That is you loving him and understanding that he's boss and he's king. And, and oh, I, Lord, I just, I was so imperfect today. I, I blew it. Now, continue. And you came and you saved the day again, Lord Jesus. You're such a great Savior. You, you saved me once and always, and you saved me daily in my sanctification. Thank you, Lord, for being my Savior even now. Will you recognize that? Will you confess that, that Jesus is your Lord now, that he's your Savior now? BYU is a corrupt college. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, they're all corrupt colleges, bud. If, if they're a university and they're an accredited university, they are of the devil. Th this is nothing more than a devil's den. Because what is the devil? He's a liar and he's a thief. What is the college? They thieve you hundreds of thousands of dollars to teach you lies. And you pay for the lies. Oh, Tyvon says, man, one thing I struggle with is assurance of salvation. Sometimes it comes up and it's down. Yeah, uh, God's word never changes. What I need to do is just focus on Jesus. Yeah, and just believe it. And, and just stop thinking about it. You've got to stop progressing in that thought. you got to stop and say, okay, and cut and start preaching to the devil. Start preaching him your favorite sermon of once saved, always saved. I'm saved and you're not. I'm going to heaven because of the blood and you never got the opportunity. I'm a human. Jesus became a human. He never became one of you bastard angels to, to save your bastard selves. Oh, dude, the devil's going to flee, man. He's going to stop putting that uh, unassurance in your heart. And you're going to bring solidity and solidification into your soul through believing and preaching the truth. Preach out loud. Faith comes by hearing. And I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to get on the pulpit. Don't turn on your don't turn on your record button. Just you and the devil. And any devils that want to mess with you, any of you still listening to have or have you all run off yet? Shall I continue? I'm gonna continue. And you keep preaching truth and you shout joys and you shout hallelujah. If it's love, joy, and peace, the devil hates it. Bring him love, joy, and peace. Get him out of your mind. That's the battlefield. He has no weapons there, guys. He only has lies in your mind. And if you can think like he wants you to think, he wins. That's what BYU is all about. That's what all these colleges are all about. As soon as you can think like the devil and, and you really think like him, he's got you. And he loves it. But if you come out of that, come out of her, my people, come out of Babylon, come out of that wickedness, and you start preaching the Bible, believing the Bible, understanding every word of the Bible, reading it every day out loud, if you'll read the Bible codes out loud, Record yourself and just hear it. Listen to these sermons. We read them out loud every day. Put it on double speed, however fast you can get through it, the fastest and comprehend it at the same time. Make sure you comprehend the speed you're at, okay? And get through these things. Listen to them. And God will encourage and strengthen you because Jesus, he either saved you or he didn't. And we got to come to the conclusion that he did. He's, he he paid the price for all the people in hell, okay, dude? That's how much he loves them. That's how much he redeemed them. That's how much he died for them. That's how much he saved them. That's how much he was dead, buried, and rose again for them. So if he did that for all the people who rejected him, how much more so for those people that believe him, okay? Just believe and know that. The devil hates it. The devil hates for you to preach that the massive majority of the people that Jesus died for went to hell not believing it. How much more are the people going to go to heaven who do believe it? Come on, man. He died for the people in hell to believe it. Solidify that thing. That's, that's a good, good, honest uh, uh, word there, brother. We're going we're gonna to pray on you on that. Focus on the word. Pray on the word. Speak that word. Speak it to the devil. Get a pulpit up there. Get your Bible out and you start preaching to the devil the truths. Listen to me. Boy, he hates that. He hates that when you stand up with boldness and you preach the truth of God's blood, his love, Calvary, the death, burial, and resurrection that the devil can't get. You can't get it. You're dead. You're doomed because you're such a fool, you retard, you bastard. You tell him what he is. Oh, he hates He hates truth coming at him and because he knows what the truth is. He wants us to believe in his lie. And when we oppose him, he has no defense for the word. He has no defense for that double-edged sword, man. And you bring him and you chop him to pieces, piercing to the dividing of thunder of soul and spirit and mind and bone and sinew and everything else. You crush him up, you chop him to pieces, man, with truth, 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 until you're solidified in it and you're singing. Guys, here's the key. 
you preach the truth, you are thankful to the Lord. You start thanking God for his salvation. You thank him, thank him. And thanks will automatically lead to a pure praise. That means peace, belief. You thank him for what is truth, for what you know to be truth, whether you feel it or not. And then the feelings will come and match the praise. The word of God's your weapon. Amen. All right. Hey, let's look at yesterday's Bible code because this thing was pretty cool. Riveting. We're just going to look at the translation. And our brother Cush has it up here, man. Hey, every one of you, every one of you do something with this Bible code. I am telling you, you have faith. I don't care what your wife thinks. I don't care what your daughters think. I don't care what your brother-in-law thinks. I don't care what your grandpa thinks. And you need not care about any of those things. And you need to get busy with this Bible code, believing it in the spite of all those oppressors. Okay? You do your part. You're going to stand before God. Do your part. I've been wanting to make ministry films. T time is short. However, a simple explanation of the Bible codes, making complex things simple. I think we can start there. I think it's great, man. I think it's great. Start. What we need to do is teach people the concept of the spool and the thread. I understand it. However, it's deep. Yeah. And the, and the simplicity of it is all the Bible code being in one word, a rope. Grab a rope. Grab you a cylinder of sorts, a spool, and begin to wrap that rope around that spool single as it, as it goes up each time you wrap it around. And at the bottom, wrap it around and teach people that this is how the Bible code is developed. That's what those red letters are. Each time it wraps around it, they land on top of each other. Then uh, the cross section, only the front section usually, is cut out to a degree at where the code stops, where Sean knows it stops at. And that becomes our borders. Be beautiful. I try to explain it and people look at me with square eyes. Well, because the blind can't see. The blind can't see. Are they justified? Do they believe the plain text? If they don't, if they don't believe the salvation by grace through faith, the plain text, they're not going to understand anything about a code. Amen. All right. Yesterday's code translation. God's word in His dialect. We said it was at that amazing skip of ninety two six forty six, and the day before he published this, Sean was forty six. That's a cool little note right there, right? And then nine twenty six. We've always talked about that, the 629, the Lul 29, all those numbers come together. But with that going from our right to left, we know that 29 is a given number. 29 has been given to us so much that you leave that alone unless you're going to make it 11, the mystery. okay? And you can always make it 11, the mystery. But you leave it 29 as long as you can leave it 29. And we know that with uh, the harvest of the week coming up on the 29th. It's a big date of the Lord. Jesus was born on the 29th. You going to switch that? 9-11. That's what Mark Bilt says. That's what we always thought. Mark 9-11 is when Jesus was born. 9-11, 9-11. How about 9-29? That, that turns into 11, but it's not 11. It's 29. And when you got a 29 there, you keep that 29 as long as the code will speak to you. And right there, we got 29. And what does... 6 plus 4, that's 10, plus 6 is 16. And you bring it down from 6. Now, 16 is good. 16 is a great number. But you bring it down to 7, and you're looking at that 729 again. What we got coming up for our harvest. That's monumental. And that should bring some momentum your way. Okay? In faith. And just that alone, and it says, God says, Sean Mitchell's clock is complete. 729. It's 10 days from now. And he says it was complete on his birthday. The day he exited his mama's womb, that's your birth date. That's the day you're born. And this mission was completed on his birth date when he turned 47. That's 11. That's the mystery. Okay? Let's look at this translation. God's word in his dialect. Sean Mitchell's clock is complete. Now, we know he's been working on the clock. He's been working on the Jewish clock and found out that the Jewish clock was 43 to 45 days off. They're operating too fast. That's the synagogue of Satan's clock. They call the Sabbath Saturday. Well, Sean got to busy. He got to fixing God's clock. God put it in his heart. Fix my clock. Fix, fix my word. My word has been bastardized. My word has been lied about. My word has been changed. 
You don't change word. Nothing changes the word of God. And there is no such thing as the Mandela effect, guys. That is a psyop from the CIA. Okay? There's nothing going to change the word of God. And I've been reading the Bible all the way through constantly for 38 years. Okay? Coming up in October will be 39. And the Bible has always read the wolf will lie down with a lamb. And stupid preachers behind the pulpit always said, the lion's going to lay down with the lamb. The lion's going to lay... The lion is the lamb, stupid. That's Jesus. That's a whole different story. That's not what we're talking about here. The wolf and the lamb will lie down together in the millennium. It's always said that. Mandela effect did come along and change all that. Amen? So here we got. Sean Mitchell's clock is complete. And he says, the day I exited my mother's womb. And that's scientific term. It's a scientific term. He exited his mother's womb. Jehovah, who Jesus, Jesus is God, not Yahweh. Not Yahweh. That's another point of reference. When I hear somebody say Yahweh, I know they don't know. They heard somebody else say that name and, and applying it to Jehovah, our God, our yod heh vav -Heh, our Jesus, and they haven't researched it out. Yahweh is a Canaanite God, God's enemy. And everybody calls Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. They're invoking the name of a demon, a Canaanite ancient one. Those bad boys are powerful. And they're not here for your good. They're not here for God's glory. They're here for their own. And you better learn not to call God Yahweh. And when you hear people doing it, you know they don't know. Okay? That's all these discernment little points, guys. They're biggies. They're little. If you could just learn that discernment list about salvation, about the name Yahweh, about for by grace are you saved through faith, and once saved, always saved, and just listen for those nuances of their change from that, any little change, an and or a but. This guy ain't saved. This guy doesn't believe the true gospel, the pure gospel. It's all Jesus. And your faith is in, in him alone. So Sean says, God says about Sean, Sean Mitchell's clock is complete the day I exited my mom's womb. That's July 18th. God's clock is done on July 18th. That was yesterday. The clock's done. It's completed. yod vav Yeshua declares that Moses is the teacher. Moses is my way. Israel, listen to him. End of the age Christian, end of the church age, end of the mystery bride age, you better listen. If you'll get these Bible codes downloaded, all 520 of them, and just go over them, over and over, you'll have your doctrine right. And the work of Jesus Christ in you will have been completed. You will have been, been conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, the dear Son. And I am encouraging you to be among that small group. You don't have to be. You're still saved if you believe. You're justified. You're sanctified. And you will be glorified. But all that will be better if you have lived that second phase of salvation and sanctification, giving your life. Remember, you and I live in the time of... Of Pentecost. What is so special about Pentecost is the free will offering. This whole, this whole time you've been alive, it's been your opportunity to give God the free will offering of all of you, of yourself, everything about you, your thoughts, your mind, your words, your deeds, your needs, everything all about Jesus. What a gift. Not too many Christians are doing that, guys. And not too many people who think they are are they still idol worshiping out the yin yang. And they're so excited about preseason starting. Woo! They don't even know that the Poseidon nuke's about to take them out. We're looking at yesterday's code, looking at the translation part of it here. Moses, God says, Jesus says, Moses is my way. You will understand it at the end of days. We're there. Do you understand it yet or not? Are you still poo pooing it and making fun and laughing and saying, oh, whatever? Let's see what they got to say tonight. As the truth of the day of Moses' flood, guys, we're about to have us a flood. We're about to have a, a tsunami. We're about to have a nuke go off the day of the flood, right around the day of the flood. Okay? You need to listen to Sean Moses Mitchell on this 
and his discourse concerning these things. It's happening just like he said it would, as we have written down in the Bible code. Know these things. God's putting his A-OK approval on this thing. The truth on the day of Moses' flood, the water of his birth, and that's when Sean will be birthed into his new mission. You and I, our missions will be complete. We'll be in heaven. The judgment seat of Christ, the marriage supper of the Lamb, and we will be told by the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ what our eternal missions will be. Amen? And and uh, what our calls are, what we've done in the work, he's going to reward us and assign us according to how we've given ourselves back to him. In love. As a free will offering. Not, I better do this or God's going to stomp me like an army boot. If that's your, if that's your thinking, you're doing it wrong. It's, it's vanity. It's called believing in vain. Believing God, what God said is, uh, how about, uh, caught you live, bro. Hey, good to see you, Matt. Catherine, amen. Garris, hey, fam. Hey, buddy. Good to see y'all. Praise the Lord. And so get caught up on this thing. And Sean is about to be born into the, the child caught up, Satan trying to devour him, the man child. That's you and me. We're all going to be glorified. We're all going to be changed into that. The, the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, the third phase of salvation, these old bodies will be saved finally. Amen? Won't that be great? We won't know how to act, dude. With no negatory, no sin, no doubts, no anything that comes from the devil and the flesh. It's all going to be glorified and heavenly, man. God's going to bless us in that. He says, and so, as the truth on the day of Moses' flood, the water of his birth, that big flood tsunami, is the time that we are all... Given our glorified bodies, he's given his glorified body and sent back with the other guy on their missions to do God's word for work for the next three and a half years. Okay, and their new tasks, and their glorified tasks. Jehovah Yeshua, uh, Yeshua declares it complete. Now, if Jesus declares something, you're gonna go with that. You're gonna doubt it. You're gonna roll your eyes. And go, oh boy, there they go again. You better believe that God wants His word here. He wants his word in his dialect here, and he's going to preserve it here. And whatever he has said in this thing is what he has declared. Everything in this Bible code is the very word of God in fire, in boldness, in modern day vernacular, telling us what we need to know concerning modern day events, play by play by play, even events that haven't happened yet and are going to happen in the next seven years. God's got it here. He said, I've told you, I've sent my prophet so you'll know that when they happen, that there has been a prophet in your midst. And he told you so. He told you so. Jehovah Yeshua declares this calendar complete. Sean's job is done. What does that tell you, folks? There's nothing more he needs to do that I know of. I thought that about, you know, two years ago. But I'm thinking it's complete. He just declared it complete, the calendar. Is there anything that you can think of that needs to be fixed by Sean before we go? Because I'm thinking it's done, man. Amen. It says, the man of signs is accessible. He's accessible on this side. And he always was. He's been accessible for 10 years. Eight years, especially. Getting these codes shot out on Facebook. On his uh, group page. Interesting. The parallels between a mother's water breaking and the births, of the baby, and the water event right at the rapture. That's what it is. And that's what God was showing us seven years ago with the Revelation 12 sign. The child being born, caught up, and the devil waiting to devour the man child. That's you and me, and especially Sean. The devil does not want Sean coming back to this earth glorified, indestructible, indisputable. Nobody can dispute him. He's got the word of God. He's got the fire of God. He'll kill you with that same fire if you try to dispute. You try to come at him, dog. The devil doesn't want this to happen. He wants him dead before he's glorified. He wants us all wiped out before because we're going to receive our assignments that come back while he's locked up in hell for a thousand years. Then he'll be released, and then we'll still go on with our assignments for eternity while he's you know in hell. And so he is miffy. He doesn't want to go down alone. That's what this whole marker of the beast is. I'm taking away God's creation, those made in his image, and I'm going to make them in my image, and they're going to come with me to hell. It sounds like a great plan, don't it, you, all you 666 heavy metal idiots, you fools, you idiots, you, you diaper-wearing retards. 
Get the bottle out of your mouth. Get that thumb out of your mouth. And why don't you hear us and believe, man? Amen? Uh, it's time. Wow. I believe what God... I totally missed that. I totally missed what Kim said. Sorry about that. Uh, the CrowdStrike worldwide server outage should be a big wake-up call on how quick a structural collapse can occur, uh, occur in society. The rapture will begin... Uh, the real collapse. It sure is. It sure is at every level. The money collapsed. The computing collapsed. The food collapsed. I mean, the collapses are here. It's going to be an ultimate, uh, ultimate devastation here in the United States for sure. Worse than a third world country. And Josh says, man, I'm with you, sister. And I guess I am too. Praise the Lord. Sorry, I missed that. I'll go, have to go back and read the notes. We'll go through this again, Matt. We'll call it a night. I didn't plan on taking the whole night, but I did want to take the night and share the gospel. Understand the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, your faith place in that. That is the gospel. Nothing else. That's it. That's the gospel. And then when you're talking with people, understand that they understand. Listen to them. Have them tell you what the gospel is until they're telling it to you properly. And then you find out that, do you believe this or what? Are you just lying again? Are you just spatting stuff out of your mouth that you shouldn't be? All these vain words that we're going to be held accountable for. Guys, we're going to be held accountable for every word we say. Let's say them for God's glory. Amen? Uh, volcanic activity and solar flares. Amen. Those things are jacking me up. Those solar flares have jacked me up bad today. Uh, Evelyn, amen. Collapse of the system called a fire sale. Everything is lined up like little duckies, man. Like little duckies. Let's read this again. We'll call it a day. And remember the verse down in here, Daniel seven eighteen, like July 18, like Sean's birthday. God declaring that the calendar has been completed on Sean's birthday. The 47th one. And what's so cool about these dates, and that's what I love about Josh's post. Josh says, today is whatever, you know, the 19th of IR, year 1994, 5994, blah, blah, blah. And then all people got to do, that they'll see that date up there. Every day he says that, it'll say July 4th, the next day, July 5th, July 6th, July 7th, he said this, July 8th of 2024, he said this, July 9th, July 10th, all the way down. And it's all, he's got it recorded with the Gregorian calendar and the calibrated calendar of God through Sean Mitchell, his servant. Boom, boom, boom. And what did God say? Yeah, my calendar's done. So I'm thinking the non-spoken words of that are, so why don't y'all just come on home? He's done his task. The child needs to be born. We need to send him back in his new job, newfound glory. Amen? Uh, that salvation explanation was so helpful. Good. Uh, everything's lined up. Hell is... Uh, lies in a dark place of pain and fire. Yep, yep, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Sean Mitchell's clock is completely, completely fixed. It's completely completed. Uh, the day he exited his mom's womb, the birthday, this 47th birthday. yod Hey vav Hey Jesus declares that Moses is the teacher. Moses is my way, says God. Please let this be true in your heart. God declared it. What are you going to do? Undeclare it? Deny it? Scoff it? Laugh it? I got people I never thought would be scoffers in my world who are the scoffers in my world. And they don't think they are because they're self-righteous because they don't believe the Bible code. And you're not going to believe the Bible code if you don't believe Moses. You better believe that God says that Moses is my way. If you go opposite of Sean Mitchell and you go opposite of Moses and the work that he's done in this Bible code... You're going against me, says Jesus. Scoff away. Scoff away, dude. You got to know that Moses, J Yeshua says this, declares that Moses is the teacher. Moses is my way. You'll understand it at the end of days. Please understand it. You're going to understand it as the truth on the day of Moses, the flood. You're going to understand this at the rapture. You're going to understand every bit of what we said was true at the rapture, the water event, the water breaking and the child being born. You're going to get it. The flood water of his birth. Yodhe Vave, that's God's name, Jehovah. Yeshua, 
declares it complete. It is finished. The man of signs is accessible. Right now, guys, everybody's without excuse. July 18th is my watchmaker's life. Boom. From day one until day year 47, day one. The life of Jesus Christ, the life of truth, the work that he's done with his hands, the wonderful, miraculous wonder skips. God's an awesome Bible code. God's genius. God's understanding and his wisdom put place in the, this man for our, our sakes. You better believe. The man is uh, of signs, that's Sean, he's accessible. Right now you can get to him and they'll be able to get to him in the trip. July 18th in my watchmaker's life. And then God gives us that Daniel 718 verse in there just for, you know, awesomeness. Because Sean is the second Daniel. Daniel sealed them. Sean unsealed the word. I mean, come on, bro. Come on, bro. It all lines up. Who was that? Gareth said that? Everything is lined up. This is too. Go with it. I'm looking for Jesus to come rapture us anytime between now and the 29th. I'll start with that, and then if we need to go from there, we will. But I'm looking up. I encourage you to look up, man. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. I thank you for all your ministers, your men and women here, your boys and girls, your bride. I pray you'll encourage them. I pray that you'll solidify the faith of your scriptures in our hearts. May our hearts be concrete, your word, and keep us from wavering like a wave of the seas. Keep us from being double-minded and give a single mindedness give a singleness of purpose get all the other garbage the earth the flesh the world out of us so we'll quit being unbalanced and to be absolutely balanced and and right there anchored in your word thank you for being our anchor thank you for calling us thank you it's amazing it's amazing that we're here and that you've called us and i pray for all your ministers all your servants of righteousness and truth who you put together here at this time in this day for this purpose. And we just come for this purpose to praise your name. Thank you for bringing out us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Thank you for having mercy on such losers like us, on people who have never once deserved your graciousness, your gifts, your salvation, your holiness, your works, your wonderful sweet touch. And yet you've given us all that plus a whole bunch more. Teach us to number our days and to count our blessings, Lord. We praise you. We pray for Sean that you'll help him as he's putting everything else. He's got your calendar to completion. But as he hits that last upload on this book to be it all complete, all ready to go. And bless him in that. Bless him with wisdom. Bless him with energy. Bless him with uh, signs that direct his steps, man. And for your wonderful word in his heart. Bless him. Bless all these people as we read your word. Keep us faithful at, at that daily. Just hearing your, your word, your voice, and uh, understanding your codes. Your word and your dialect. We praise you and we thank you. And uh, thank you for this crowd. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, guys. Amen, says Brother George. Good to see you, buddy. Cush, man. God bless everyone supporting this ministry. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Johnny Boy. Amen. Jenny says, Amen. Adrian, she says, Amen. She's a servant of God. She's on that list. Serving every day, you know, sharing, sharing, getting the gospel out there. Safe travels, J JB and Mimi. Amen. Sweet fellowship with the beloved brother. Praise God. Looking forward to that. Uh, they have nobody in their town and I have nobody in mine. So it'd be good to travel a ways to hug next to somebody of like faith. Amen. 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 I've got all these amen shooting through here. I can see one, uh, Catherine, says, Amen. I'm so glad to see you, sister. Evelyn, thank you, Pastor JB, for encouraging us every day. Matt says, uh, I've known Johnny since he was early 20s. That's right. He was in my youth group in Wilmington, North Carolina. Amen. And God had me come across his way. He, he come across my way to get us together and connected even at the end of days. We were disconnected. For a long time. And here recently in the last couple of years, God's brought us back together, man. And we've both gone through some hell and back. And here's God. Here's God saving the day, taking care of both of us. Praise God for that, bro. Now he's an adult man with children and adult problems. And he needs our prayers just like we need his. 
Amen. Aaron, Sister Aaron, says, Amen. Cush, God bless you, Brother Matthew. Amen, Matt. God bless you, dude. Thank you, Brother Sean, Brother Cush, Brother George, all here, says Evelyn. Matt says, I was 14. He sure was. Sure was. And uh, now at 46. How about that? Sure was, man. I praise God for that, buddy. I praise God you're still here. Believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ and that alone. Share it with others. We're about to get raptured here, buddy. And I ain't I ain't looking past 10 days, folks. Anybody on here looking past 10 days? I mean, we, we're, we can. We have 153 days to look to, but I'm not looking past these 10 days. Kim says, Matthew, asked a question a ways back. Uh, showed up in my driveway a couple times in the middle of the night, too. Amen. Amen, dude. Amen. That's what we do. That's what we do. We we love our we love our brothers and sisters, and when they when they in trouble, we show up. Amen. We're there for them. Hallelujah. Praise God, dude. That's right. That's right. God's good to us. We're good to each other. Amen. I love you guys. By God's grace, we'll see you seven twenty six tomorrow night. Uh, Matt says I asked about the Gregorian calendar offsetting the true date. Yeah, uh, and Sean's got that all that worked out. Uh, the last thing he uh, worked out was the 360-day prophetic calendar of the Bible. And we see that in the book of Daniel, and we see that in the book of Revelation, where God gives us day counts. And he calls 1,260 days, he calls that 42 months. So you take 42 months and divide that by 1,260 days, you're going to come out with 30-day months, which is a 360-day year calendar. So this world has seen the effects of Nibiru several times where the poles have shifted and the spin has changed. We've gone from a 360-day calendar to a 365 and a quarter day calendar, right? Spin. And so the earth is going to flip two different times by the time Jesus comes back. And the second time he comes back is going to be set perfectly. And this clock that Sean has put together is going to match that, is going to match the corrected what, what they say the Jewish calendar, but it's the world calendar. Because when you see Josh put up those dates every day, it's the world count. Since the world was created, was 5,994 years ago. And this is the month IR and whatever date it is. And so all those things are going to click like gears, man, when Jesus comes back, when it's final. Sean's done his part that he needed to do on this side, and Jesus has declared it complete. The Gregorian calendar is a sham, because the Gregorian calendar has all of God's dates at the wrong date, just like the Jewish calendar does. God refers to them as the synagogue of Satan. He refers to it in, in Isaiah. He says, I hate, I hate. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cush, you caused harlotry, so he declared woe. That was in this one, right? Yeah. Uh, that was two, two ago, I think, wasn't it? A theory. Uh, that's what... You was asking. Okay. And so, yeah. Yeah, so so this is, be, yeah, so that's what he's done. He's corrected the calendar. God's directed his heart to correct the calendar because God's calendar is his Bible. He gave us his calendar in the Bible. It's his word. And for men to go against it is for men to oppose God and his fire, his word, man. Amen. And so we got the clock back. It has been completed. Jesus declared yesterday that it was done on Sean's birthday, letting everybody know when the, when the work was done. Everything in this Bible code is fixed concerning the clock as far as God is concerned. Now he's going to be the one who turns back time when he flips this world. And he'll turn it back forward. And he'll turn it back. And he's going to fix it up. God's the one turning back time. Sean is the one writing it down, showing us how he's going to turn it back and how he's turned it back. And it's not there yet, but it will be. And so we've got the dates where everything is, boom, and it's going to all gear up and land perfectly. Yes, the 360 dates is up for Matthew. Okay, so Cush has put that link up there explaining the 360 days on that uh, code that we did, that Sean did, that we went through here. I want to make sure we're on the same page, and we were. Good. See you in heaven, Brent. See you in heaven, guys. And by his grace, we'll see you tomorrow night if we're not in heaven at the 726 Central. I love you, man. God bless every one of you. And you keep walking. Walk in that sanctification. Be the perfect gift back to Jesus. Give him yourself. Give him your life. Dump all idols. Burn everything out of your world that doesn't exist. All those wasted moments you spend watching TV, playing video games, listening to stupid music, whatever that is, flush that. 
and give all of that time to the Lord, reading his word, sharing his word, memorizing his word, meditating, get, getting it out there, getting your Facebook saved. Uh, most of the Christians that are on my friends list need to get their Facebook saved. You need to get your platforms on X everywhere else saved. And you need to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ in that and give him you during this moment of personal holiness, self-sanctification. Because that's all you got to give. Jesus Christ gave everything else and we believe that. You give yourself in a free will offering right here at Pentecost, which is marked by a free will offering. Amen? All right, guys. I love you dearly. And by his grace, we will see you tomorrow night, 726.